All right, hello, welcome. Here in this, uh, these examples, we're going to use the distributive property to write each sum. That means we're gonna add them, write the sum in factored form. So what does that mean? Well, in the first example, we have the number 36 and 20. And I'm going to use uh, prime factorization to find the greatest common factor between these two numbers. So, for example, with 36, I know 6 times 6 is 36, and I know uh, 6 is 2 times 3. So I am writing these trees out until I reach the prime factors. Now, this means that 36 is the same as 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. So we're expressing 36 as a product of its prime factors. That means we're going to multiply the prime factors 2, 3, 2, 3, and get 36. We do this because when we do the same thing with 20, 20 is 4 times 5, 5 is prime, we circle all the primes, 4 is 2 times 2. We do this because now we can use the prime factors to construct the greatest common factor. So I notice that both numbers, 20 and 36, both have a factor of 2 and 2. So that means their greatest common factor is 2 times 2, which is 4. So I'm going to factor out a 4. And what that means is I need to now think about, okay, 4 goes into 36 and 20. So 4 times what is 36 and 4 times 20? Uh, sorry, sorry, 4 times what is 36 and 4 times what is equal to 20. And those numbers will go inside the parentheses. So and I'll put a plus sign here because we're expressing this as the sum. So if we look at the prime factors, we use 2 and 2 already. Well, 3 and 3 are left over, so that tells me 2 times 2, 4, times 3 times 3, 9, is 36. So 4 times 9 is 36. Now you might know 4 times 5 is 20, but we can also see that that's the prime factor we didn't use. So you can use the greatest common factor times the remaining prime factors um, to construct the numbers inside the parentheses. Now these two things are equal. And we know that because of the distributive property. Now this is right here, this is the answer in factored form because four is the GCF, right? We've got that factor out there. And if you want to test it to see are these things equal, we could use the distributive property, right? Four times nine is 36 and four times five is 20. Now we'll do the same thing in the next problem. In the next problem we've got 15, which is just three times five and 24 24 I know is 8 times 3, 3 is prime, and 8 is 4 times 2, and 4 is 2 times 2. So here the greatest common factor you can see is just 3. That's the only prime factor that they both have. So we factor out a 3, okay. And now I'd say 3 times something is 15, so I know 3 times 5 is 15, and I know 3 times 8 is 24. So I'm done. This is in greatest common, this is in factored form, excuse me, and 3 is the greatest common factor. Again, if you weren't sure 3 times something is 15, look at the other prime factor, right? 3 times 5 is 15. And for 24, 3 times something is 24. Well, we have 3 here, and we have 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 24. So that means 3 times 8 is 24. Finally, we have 56 and, and 48. So I'm going to clear off some of this. So 56, um, 56 is the product of 7 times 8. So if we multiply 7 times 8, we get 56. 8 is 4 times 2, and 4 is 2 times 2. So 7 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 56. For 48, well, I know that 8 times 6 is 48. 6 is 2 times 3, and 2 and 3 are both prime. 8, again, is 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. All right, so we look at these, and we can find the greatest common factor. I notice that we have three twos, and here we have also three twos. So the greatest common factor for both numbers is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So we're factoring out an 8. Now we still, we can't change the numbers, we're just kind of factoring them out, right? 8 is the GCF of both numbers. So 8 times 7 
is 56, and we can see that here, that's the missing prime factor we haven't used. And eight times three times two, right, is 48, and three times two is six, and eight times six is 48. All right, I hope this helps.